um, the law is the law. The law in America is different to the law in Brazil, is different to the law in Jamaica, is different to the law in St. Kitts, and is different to the law in St. Martin. Important is that you know the law in the country where you live, you know the, the law in the country where you are operating. So with the changes in the civil code, uh, people have not even been aware that several things have changed. And one would live in the belief that this is how it should be, or this is how it was when my parents uh, had gotten married, or when my parents were dividing their property. And inheritance law has changed uh, quite a bit, and people still hold on to some of the old beliefs and then find themselves uh, in hot water when the law is applied to them. So we want to encourage everyone to come out, uh, to participate, to ask questions. Don't just sit back and hope somebody will ask the question for you, but ask questions so that you can get uh, the correct information. Uh, a few weeks ago I said that um, the draft law on establishing the fund for the youth uh, employment that I had sent it to the Legal Affairs Department uh, for them to, to vet. Uh, I'm happy to announce that this morning I got back uh, the, okay. the, the adaptations that they have made. I will do my utmost. I, would, I know um, the Secretary General, uh, if she's looking, would not like the idea, but I would do my utmost to squeeze it onto the agenda for tomorrow, but definitely no later than Tuesday. It will be on the agenda for the Council of Ministers to uh, formally adopt so it can uh, go into the advisory process. And we can have it then uh, soon debated and established in Parliament. Preparations uh, was to begin uh, for us to launch the campaign in registering uh, the young unemployed people. Uh, but in a meeting and in consultation with the head of the labor office, uh, Mrs. Peggy Andros, uh, she informed me that actually they have a database with some 500 young people already that fall within the range of the criteria that um, instead of like reinventing the wheel and starting all over again, that they would begin uh, the process of calling uh, these young people uh, to see if they are still unemployed and to vet their interest to, part, to take part in this project. Um, nonetheless, uh, with that, we would still uh, do um, sort of a recruitment, a, a, a signing up campaign. It would not last for long. Uh, we will go in all the different districts probably on one or two days. And uh, because we believe if we send uh, a, a team in every district, just two or three people, um, if you would go in, it's about 11 districts that we figure we can, we can target. If you get uh, 20 candidates from 11 districts, you're already talking uh, close to 300 people. So we believe it is um, with the 500, uh, we would see what, what all is there. And in addition, we will have a one or two day uh, campaign to see if there's more to add to it. But we hope that this uh, program will get off the ground as quick as possible. Um, I know you are eager to ask your questions, and okay. since I have a meeting at 11, I will break here to grant you the opportunity to ask your questions. Thank you, Cedric. Good morning, uh, Prime Minister Marlin, uh, Minister Jacobs. Uh, Prime Minister Marlin, um, this morning I went uh, to pay my tail and bill, and I parked very close to 
the, gov the new government administration building, however new it is. And I notice um, some other security guards there. What I'm trying to figure out is government outsourcing the security for government buildings? Uh, you would notice security guards where? At the building over there, the new building. The, <clears throat> the building right now is on the, um, if you want to call it. Construction. Ownership of SZV. Mm -hmm. So SZV is responsible for the security that is at the building right now during the construction phase. Once the reconstruction is over and government occupies the building, government becomes responsible for the security at the building. It is just like, let's say the employees who are there, they're not working for government, they're working for SNV. Thank you for the clarity. Um, Minister Jacobs, um, yesterday, one of your employees, I would like to say, as he said, friend, close friend, <laughs> broke his silence uh, due to an article written about his son. Um, he said he's been victimized as a civil servant, as a head of a department, when, when it comes to uh, study financing. I'm sure you read the article and probably listened to the voice notes. He lashed out at politicians that are making promises to people, and when the time comes, they just can't deliver, and they stay silent. And even though the department head is not making the decisions, decisions are made by ministers, um, what can you add to this predicament that a civil servant is facing? Bibi, good, after good morning. Um, I believe I addressed this situation last week in um, deeming the article very damaging, using some facts and plenty of fiction to create sensation. And I totally disagreed with the way that a in Chazondon stuck, as you would say, something you might expect to see as a opinion from someone written at the back of the paper somewhere, where the commentaries usually are being utilized on the front page and utilizing the picture of a young St. Martin student studying abroad. Um, I did say last week, and I will repeat, that it is a personal problem. And because of this promotion in the media, it has adversely or more negatively impacted, of course, the family. The ministry stands by the statements made last week that, yes, decisions on study financing are made by the minister. The process was explained, and I think we've explained that process several times in parliament and out of parliament. An advice is prepared by a committee which looks at all that are taken in and presents to the minister. The minister has the final say. Once the minister decides, there's an appeal committee that deals with anyone that objects to the decision of the minister. And then again, the minister has the opportunity to either change or maintain the position that was originally decided upon. So, I believe this particular division head has been in the past many times or people feel he is the one making the decisions on study financing and in the article even the question was made whether his son deserved to have study financing, yes or no. And that is again another slap at his functioning as a division head. As a ministry, I am and a person that knows the individual quite well. I trust his integrity. I trust his functioning as the head of the vision, and therefore I am not in support of such statements being made in the media without corroborating facts. Um, he has his battles to fight as a parent and with his son and their situation. And of course, the facts being blown out of proportion and making several claims, I think, will end up, as he stated in his um, statement, between the league in the legal you know, hemisphere. However, I do, again, I would really like, I've been at the podium several times where I've said that youth on St. Martin, youth all over the world, and people in general have done and continue to do things that are wrong. The ministry does not condone any wrongdoing. However, we would like, instead of highlighting the negatives in such a way, that we highlight the positives. Many times I've had to stand at the podium and beg for front page for good news that our youth have been executing. And sometimes we do see it, and other times we don't. 
the majority of students abroad are doing very, very well. The majority of students on St. Martin are doing well and they move on to next levels and improve. Of course, based on some of the results I even mentioned earlier, we would like to see them doing better. But what was coming out of those meetings we held in the United States with our colleges is that our students are doing very well. The young man in question is not on probation at his school. However, maliciously, the article that was printed in the paper was also sent to the school. Accusations are coming as to the intent of what happened and what didn't happen. Our meetings with Tallahassee Community College were strictly pertaining to MOUs that needed to be re revisited and communicated and uh, how you say, collaborated on, discussions need to be had about it. The reports we got from the school were about the students. The gentleman in question went as the head of study financing and not for any other reason. And so I believe all of the actions that we took in the United States pertaining to pre uh, getting opportunities for our students were achieved. We got two new schools on board and we are revisiting all agreements which were, are, are, are about to run out so that our students can continue to enjoy the opportunities as students abroad. We have students on St. Martin and we have people all over the place that are doing things that they don't need to do. We don't see it splash all over the front page. That is what I find abhorrent. And I will continue to state that. As a follow-up to the very question, um, now that the article went to the school, it was locally, but now it went to the school directly, sent directly to the school. Do you see um, this incident, even though the young man has not yet been charged or convicted, um, do you see this hampering the relationship between St. Martin and the Tallahassee Community College because the name of the school was fully printed in the article? I do not believe that it will damage. If that was the intention of the article, then even more so, um, I am very disappointed. Uh, the discussions, as I said, were very fruitful, and we continue to have the discussions from the school and the division to sort out the memorandum of us and understanding as pertains to our students. So our students have not been in any way jeopardized by this, and I hope that the years of collaboration between Tallahassee Community College, the city, and St. Martin, and the Ministry of Education will continue to be a positive one. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Jacobs. Thank you very much, Bibi, for your questions. Hilbert Hart, Today Newspaper, you have the floor. Thank you. I have one question for uh, Minister Jacobs. Um, I heard you say mention the, the award ceremony for the students as uh, June 26. Maybe I misheard, but I, I seem to remember I got an email June saying 25th. it was 25. June 25th. 25th. You are correct, June 25th. 25th, so yes. So if I did say 26, then I misspoke. It is on the 25th. Uh -huh. Okay, well, then my ears work. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much, Hilbert. Alida Singh today, um, sorry, the Daily Herald. Thank you, you have the floor. Good morning. Good morning, Prime Minister. Welcome back. Good morning, Minister Jacobs. Uh, Prime Good Minister morning. on electoral reform, is there any updates for us? Electoral reform, where have we been at? Uh, no, um, <laughs> I, I was, uh, when we were in the Netherlands, as you know, one of the process or the process that um, changing the Constitution because the electoral reform calls for changing of the Constitution, making changes to the Constitution, and that uh, before you can um, amend the Constitution, you need to first get the, as they call it, the feelings uh, of the of the the, the kingdom government. Um, so. Prior to sending it to Parliament for a debate and approval, <clears throat> we have to send it to the uh, Kingdom government, which we did, and they get their advice from the uh, Council of State. We also sent it to the local Council of Advice um, via the governor, and they too would submit their advice. In a brief discussion with Minister Rutte, um, while we were in Cuba, he mentioned that it should have been on the agenda for the Kingdom Council uh, this past week, but that he was obviously not going to be in the meeting. And he kind of said that 
he think there was uh, some uh, legal question that they had about it. And that's, that's as far as the discussion had gone. Um, prior to going to Cuba, I uh, wanted to call uh, Minister Plasteric, or rather Peter and Donner as well, um, who heads the Council of Advice. Um, but I keep forgetting the time difference. <laughs> so at the end of the afternoon, when I picked up the phone, I realized it was past midnight. And um, I did not worry to call. So this week, um, now that I'm back, I will make sure I call during the day to find out if they have made any headway um, with it. But um, we are excited about, about it, of course. It's um, an issue that we've discussed uh, with the other um, kingdom partners, with the other uh, prime ministers, um, in terms of getting their feeling. And generally, generally the feeling is that uh, it's something good to pursue. Um, because one of the concerns that the Dutch have had is what they call uh, the free mandate of members of parliament in Dutch, the Vrije Mandat. Uh, that they were afraid that we would restrict a member of parliament once elected. And we are not taking away the right of a member of parliament uh, to break away from his or her party. We are not taking away their right as to how they can or cannot vote in parliament. Uh, what we are saying is with the support a government needs uh, to get support from a majority. And we are saying that that support has to come from one or more political parties. Since to participate in the election, you gotta be part of a political party. No individual can take part in an election. Uh, you have to register a political party before the political party has to live up to certain criteria, has to be subject to the law on campaign financing, et cetera, et cetera. Also, there's a lot of focus on political parties. And when, you, when, you, when seats are assigned, they're not assigned to the individual. It is the party that wins seats. You can get a party probably winning four or five seats, but none of the individuals in that party would so-called win their seat outright. So if you need a 1,000 votes for a seat, the party would get a cumulative probably 4,000 votes, but not one of the four elected got a seat on their own. And even if you get a seat on your own, the argument would be, did that individual run as an individual or run on another list? Would he or she have gotten 1,000 votes on that party uh, uh, on his own? So the, the seats belong to the party and they're occupied by the individuals. The individual then has the seat. But if the individual defects and leaves the party for whatever reason, then you are no longer a party, you're an individual. And the support for government comes from one or more parties. And then we take away from what we, for instance, have now a government supported by eight seats. And four of those seats come from individuals and not from parties. And, well, not, so, sorry, um, my apology. Um, two of those seats come from individuals. But within parliament, we have four factions made up of individuals who are not political parties. But we treat them as if they were political parties, they are faction, they get faction staff, and, and they become faction leaders. And, and you can have someone, and I'm not criticizing any individual member, because two of them are supporting this government, um, but you can have somebody with 100 votes who now become a faction leader of a fiction party, because that party doesn't exist. None of those individuals who are now uh, independent members have a party. 
the individual members and the seats or the votes that they hold individually <coughs> could not get them a seat if they contested the election as a faction by themselves or an individual. And even if they headed a list, there is no guarantee that they would have gotten a seat. So again, the proposal is aimed at curbing the ship jumping, but curbing it in the sense that you, 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 you can jump as often as you want, but the difference would be there will be no reward in the formation of the government. So you won't break away from this government to form a government with a new group um, under the promise that you will get to appoint one or more ministers. That has been the case um, every time that we see people um, break away from the government. Um, I know your time is going, but I have one quick question. On Friday, par Parliament is going to handle the changes to the ID card uh, regulation. Could you give us a brief insight into what are some of those uh, changes to that law? We will discuss that on Friday. Mr. In your opening remarks, you spoke about um, the wishes of the Netherlands and uh, their, 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 their efforts to get on the UN Security Council and they have asked the three countries in the Caribbean to support them. Knowing all that what St. Martin have been going through with the Netherlands, is St. Martin going to support the Netherlands in campaigning for them to get on the UN Security Council? Um, we have not, we have not, uh, how you would say, denied uh, their request and their effort. But one of the things that I uh, want to do is, if, if you want to call it, um, negotiate or discuss uh, the, 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 the realities of the kingdom. Uh, we cannot deny it that we are in a kingdom, um, but we can also not pretend that all is is, is well. In any home where people uh, live that love each other, uh, there's always sometimes some discussion or some need for improvement. One of the things that I, I wanted to put on the table, and it's not blackmail, uh, is, is, is the issue that our students have been going through for many years um, in terms of the study financing in Holland. Uh, many students have benefited immensely for it. But when I look, for instance, uh, personally with my daughter and her husband, the amount of uh, mail they keep getting from uh, the study financing organization in the Netherlands, and um, w what it is that we have been asking as the Dutch Caribbean, um, two things, to convert the loan at the end of your study period, so when a student ends his studies in the Netherlands, <coughs> they have accumulated a study debt with a duo of, let's say, 50,000 euros. Upon their return to St. Martin, they owe 50,000 euros. There's a, there's a system by which they would have to, each year, apply for what they call the Draagkracht meeting, um, so your ability to repay. And uh, a lot of them get in trouble because they don't get the information from the tax office in time, and with Holland, a deadline is a deadline. Mm -hmm. So if you've missed your deadline, uh, you have to pay. What is the problem, let us say? Two, you have to repay your debt in euros. If you have to repay a debt in dollars because we are pegged to the dollar, it doesn't matter. A thousand dollars remain a thousand dollars. But a thousand euros, depending on the rate of exchange, one day a thousand euros would be one thousand one hundred dollars. In the next month or two or three months after, a thousand euros would be a thousand five hundred dollars. So when you have an amount of 50,000 euros and your payment, let's say in 2015, was 6,000 euros for that year, you pay 6,000 euros, and instead of your debt now dropping, let's say, to 40, 
4,000 euros, so from 50,000 minus the 6,000 to 44,000, because of the exchange rate, it stays at 44,000 euros, but in terms of dollars, which you are paying, you understand? Oh, so instead know. of it being now, let's say, $44,000, it would go back up to $50,000 because of the exchange rate. Uh, so we have asked them to convert at the end of it, convert the loan into dollars and allow the students to repay their loan in dollars, and two, to set up, let's say, an account in St. Martin, in the case of St. Martin students. And our students can simply go to, let's say, Windward Islands Bank or Scotia Bank or one of the local banks and make their payment. When you have to, every month, transfer four, 500 euros in certain cases to the Netherlands, the bank fees, the headaches, and the transactions, and because of the fluctuation of the euro, it remains for them 500 euros, but for the student here, the fluctuation goes up and down and you can't properly budget. Um, we feel that if you want to show uh, unity within the kingdom and, 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 and treat kingdom partners, uh, of course it is not equal treatment because let's say the one in, in, in Holland uh, is paying in euros and the one here, but to accommodate students in a part of the kingdom because of a problem that they're experiencing. So these are some of the issues, and there are one or more other issues that we would want to put in the discussion For example. as part of our support. I'm not going to go public with all of them. I don't think it is For example, a, a, a this, proper. For example, did, would, would the dispute committee be one of them? I said it would not be proper for us to continue having a public debate on something that we should have between the governments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bibi. Prime Minister, will you be leaving us? Thank you very much yes. for updating us on matters related to your respective ministry. Minister Jacobs, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Cedric. Um, before moving on to any other questions that um, the media might have, uh, there was also another report this morning or uh, uh, another uh, piece in the opinion section of the Daily Herald today from a parent um, requesting a, re uh, a response from the minister. I must say that I did not receive any correspondence. I don't know if the other report or the previous report, I'm not sure when that was um, printed. Um, maybe it was while I was away or when I just returned. Um, so I was not made aware of it. So if there is um, a, a letter that is addressed to my person that I would gladly receive it at the office. Um, upon reading the news last night, I did call this morning to the Division Public Education to gain some clarity which some clarity was given. Um, they weren't aware either about, they say they weren't aware either about the complaint from the parent pertaining to the school leaving exercises and what may or may not have been said in the meetings. It's also not clear from what I read what exactly was done in error by or perceived as done in error. Um, what I was made aware of though, that the names mentioned of the different schools are the committee, the graduation committee as they call it, or the school leaving exercise committee. And uh, this is the third year that they've been doing it in this manner, and this is the third committee. So each year they put together a new committee to do so, and, um, and that several meetings had been held through the school year with parents explaining how and when things would occur and what changes were expected, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so if there is a, I've requested a report from said committee uh, to determine what exactly took place, and once I receive that official complaint letter at my office, I'll be able to address it to the parent in question. The St. Martin flag is one of the national symbols of our nation, and accordingly it should be treated with respect. To use or display, destroy or to damage the flag with the intention of dishonoring it is an offense to our nation. The St. Martin flag should always be given its rightful position. On St. Martin, the St. Martin flag takes precedent over all other house flags. The flag should be reproduced in its official form and colors. The flag should never be allowed to touch the ground or floor, nor should it be flown or used for purely decorative purposes. The St. Martin flag should never be smaller than any other flag flown at the same time. 
When the flag is in such condition that it is worn and it is no longer a fitting emblem for display, it must be replaced and be destroyed in a dignified way, preferably by burning. The flag should not be draped over vehicles of any sort except military, police or state occasions. Before the flag is hoisted, it should be carried folded to the mast. After being lowered, it is folded immediately and put away. During the ceremony of hoisting and lowering the flag, or when the flag is passing in a parade or in a review, all persons present should face the flag and stand at attention with the right hand over the heart. Persons in uniform should render the military salute at the first note of the St. Martin song and retain this position until the last note. When the flag is not displayed, those present should face towards the music and act in the same manner they would if the flag is displayed there. The flag is hoisted outdoors from sunrise to sunset. If flown during the nighttime, the flag must be well illuminated. Respect the colors and official dimensions of the flag. When the St. Martin flag is flown on the island of St. Martin, it should have an honorary place above flags of the other island territories, local associations and private organizations. The Kingdom flag always occupies the place of honor when hoisted together with the St. Martin flag. In front or above a building, the place of honor is on the right facing the street. The order of the hoisting flags, that is, the Kingdom flag, then the foreign country flag, the St. Martin flag, flag of other Dutch Caribbean islands, and then other flags. To hang a flag in mourning, hoist the flag to the peak of the pole for a moment, and then to half mast. When lowering the flag, raise it to its peak briefly before lowering completely. The flag should not be displayed on days when the weather is inclement. The flag, when carried in a procession with another flag or flags, should be either on the marching right, that is, the flag's own right, or if there is a line of other flags, in front of the center of that line. When used on a speaker's platform, the flag, if displayed flat, should be displayed above and behind the speaker. When displayed from a staff in a church or public auditorium, the flag of St. Martin should hold a position of honor at the clergyman's or speaker's right as he faces the audience. Any other flag so displayed should be placed on the left of the clergyman or speaker or to the right of the audience. The flag should never be fastened, displayed, used or stored in such a manner as to permit it to be easily torn, soiled or damaged in any way. The flag should never have placed upon it, nor any part of it, nor attached to it any mark, insignia, letter, word, figure, design, picture or drawing of any nature. The flag should never be used as a receptacle for receiving, holding, carrying, or delivering anything. Flag pins should be worn on the left side of the body, near the heart. Residents are encouraged to fly the St. Martin flag at their place of residence and place of business. In an office or on a desk, the flag must be at the right of the person seated. The St. Martin flag must be flown on national days, but can also be flown at important and solemn events, such as weddings, anniversaries, funerals, births, etc. The flag must be flown at all government buildings and offices. The flag should be flown at all schools when school is in session. At the beginning and end of each term, there should be a special flag raising and lowering ceremony. Mm -hmm.